Welcome to the final section in the Determine Rations and Crop Cost part of the Penn State Extension Dairy Cash Flow Spreadsheet. Once we have finished determining all of the costs to grow our home raised crops, we are going to move on to determine the blend price and balance for these feeds. Simply go up to the tab menu and click on Blend Price and Balance. Now we are going to look at our inventories for all of these feeds. First, you want to set a basis for table calculations. We're going to choose as fed here. You will notice that there's a warning at the top that indicates that dry matter tons are negative. As you go through and fill out the table, this warning should go away. If not, you need to reevaluate whether you have sufficient dry matter from your forages to feed your dairy cows. Next, we are going to start by matching up all of the crops that we determined in the previous sheet to our ration page. So the rations in the column on the left, or the feeds in the column on the left, refer to our ration page, and we're going to match those with the feeds that we determined in our crop cost section. As we go down through the list, you can see that we have two areas for leguminous silage and legume hay that apply to alfalfa. We're going to choose both alfalfa for each feedstuff here. You will also see that we did not produce any small grains for small grain silage, so we will leave this cell blank. Remember to go through and do the concentrates as well. Because we have one crop of alfalfa on which we are producing both haylage and hay, we need to convert one of these feeds into either a haylage or hay section. When we did the determined crop cost, you can see that our alfalfa harvest yield was done on a haylage yield basis, 10 tons to the acre, if it were all in haylage. So what we need to do is convert some of that haylage into a hay dry matter percent. We can go down here to the dry matter conversion calculator to start that. Our dry matter haylage, according to our reference, is 49%, and the dry matter for the hay is 90. What we want to do is convert the haylage yield to hay, and for that, our conversion factor is going to be 54. You can select either hay to haylage or haylage to hay here. Then you want to come up and say, okay, we're going to go from haylage to hay, so we want to put in 0.54 as our conversion factor. You can see here that the farm cost per ton, which carried over from the determined crop cost side, went from 57 for the silage to 106 for the hay. Then we want to determine what percentage of the crop we harvested as either hay or haylage. We're going to say that we took five cuttings of alfalfa, and of those five, one of them was hay, and for the other four cuttings, we harvested as haylage, or 80% of the total crop was harvested as haylage. Now we want to look at our total inventories. If we had any inventories on hand left over from the previous year that we did not feed, we want to put these in our carryover ton column. As we scroll to the right, this table will estimate what our total feed balance is on the year. It will take all of the feed that we are feeding to our cows based on the rations that we entered and compare that with what we are producing on the farm. If we have enough, the total feed balance will show in green. If we have too little, the total feed balance will show in red. If we have more than a 15% allowance for shrink, the cell will also be shaded purple. In this case, it is showing that we are producing too little alfalfa hay to meet the requirements for our rations. It is also showing that we produce zero uh, small grain silage, and for that we will also have to purchase. Here in this as fed tons to purchase column, we're going to enter the total amount of tons that we will have to purchase to make up for these differences. You can use the market price in your area to determine how much it is going to cost on a per ton basis to cover these costs. If you are unsure, you can refer back to the herd ration side where we can pull the ration costs in the market ton price per ton for Pennsylvania. In this case, our small grain silage price on the market in Pennsylvania in December of 2013 is about $69. We can go back and enter 69 here, or we can use a different market price if we know what that will be. In this case, we'll use 65. And for our hay price, we'll use 106 
as that is what the price for our farm to produce it is. If you know your market prices, you would enter those there. Now that we have finished with this section, we are ready to move on to the annual cash flow sheet to finalize our plan.